Hey guys, I'm going to teach you a couple of tricks that a couple of us old dogs figured out really quickly just on a set of plans that a student actually did and sent them to me this morning. Right, so what we actually have here is a model that's been created. And if you wanted, it's quite a nice house. It's already been built. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's a model that's already been built. And we just sent him some plans and we sent him some uh, photographs just, just to see how we went because, you know what, it's good feedback for us and, you know what, it's a good way to, to help us teach new people. And there are a few things that I want to go through that are just so important for new designers to or new people new to the industry or people looking to get into the industry to understand, and that is how to read a plan. Now, we did send a full set of plans to this fellow, and he's only really brought two in. To bring in plans, guys, just quickly, go up to the tape measure tool, go to PDF, and what you need to do is just import them as good. Any more will actually ruin your graphic, or if you've got a slower computer, which you probably do when you're starting out, it won't ruin your graphics card, but it will just slow you down. The next thing that, that I really think you need to do is spend an hour, at least an hour, looking at the drawings and trying to figure out why people why the the initial modeler has written things in and some things can just be re, uh, removed for instance floor finishes and that probably aren't important at the stage uh, however existing wall to be demolished is probably something that you do want to show uh, in your model and draw so looking at this text and understanding but the most important the number one thing that you need to look at when you're drawing is the floor level. You can see in the drawing that there's actually step downs here uh, that have gone in there and we have a floor level of 19176. Over here we have 19226 and over here we have 19166. Also, and I'll just quickly explain that before I go any further. The reason being is you can go and draw everything on one level and then you have to go and edit it later. Now you can do that. The, the software is parametric, so I can select these walls here and I can figure out what the distance of the drop down is and I can move the walls and the roof down accordingly. So move, drop down, let's say 500, I haven't done the math. And then I could actually go to the slab and I can drop that down as well. Yes, it can be done, but now you can see well, there's a lot more that needed to be considered, which would have been evident if we had have done our step downs correctly. And look, here's a tip that I would use when you have a house that, with multiple step downs. I'm going to move this drawing over here. And I'm going to show you how I go about doing this. I'm going to explode the drawing, right click, explode. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using Revit, Archicad, SketchUp, Anything, this applies with all, SketchUp just has a few benefits that allows us to um, work this out a little bit better. Right, so I'm going to take my lowest height first. So I've got 1966 here and I've got 1976. So this is the lowest, right? I'm going to draw a rectangle on this drawing. Because it's exploded, it means that now I have edges and faces. And guys, there are some tutorials on edges and faces if you're new to SketchUp. But I'm going to quickly explain it. A rectangle has a face, four edges, and it has four endpoints. If I delete an edge, it no longer has a face because there's nothing holding it together. So when I actually exploded the plan, all I actually did was I turned it into a SketchUp face. And if I use my rectangle tool, I can, it depends on what the elevation shows, I can step down the whole lot or I can just step down the floor and have a drop edge beam. Now I kind of know this job, I did build it. So I know that there's a drop edge beam there and that's at 1966. Don't worry about what a drop edge beam is at this stage. And then I have, where is the rest of my floor drop down? I can actually see, I know the house that area there. Now you, you would be a little bit more accurate with that. I'm just trying to make this as quick as I can for you. Now, what I would also do is then I would go through and I would trace around the other parts of the plan that are at a different height. So I'm going to use the line tool now and just quickly try and get this as accurate as I can. There's one thing I have forgotten. I'm going to show you in a second too. Uh, that goes through to here. 
which basically means everything I'm about to do is kind of redundant, but because I've started, I'm going to finish. Obviously, I should be writing in measurements. Uh, and then I'm going to use shift here. I'm going to use shift outside the model back over to here to find where my first line was and I'm going to come into here. Now I should have two faces. I do. So if I used a calculator and I deducted 192.26 minus 19166, 191.66, I've got a 600 millimeter difference or 0 0.6 of a meter. If you're using metric, you should always draw in, in millimeters. I'm drawing in millimeters. I'm going to push pull, 600, enter. That means that the difference in height of this drawing is 600 millimeters. And the reason being on this house is that this is a concrete slab and this is floor joist. So it's already suspended. It is an extension renovation. The same thing would happen here. And I can use my rectangle tool here to make it a little bit quicker. There. And then rectangle over to here. Now, I, guys, I should be accurate and I should be reading these measurements, but this is more about showing you how I go about starting. Right. And now I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, calculator. Uh, what have I got there? 192.2. 26 minus 191.76 equals. So I've got a 500 millimeter step down here, which means this needs to come up. Oops. This one and this one need to come up 100 mil because this was 600 above. Now, if I went to go and start drawing my walls, and I can actually delete this if I want to, so you can see what's happened. When I draw my walls, I would draw them over the top of what's there, even if I don't get my wall heights right, which I, I would usually. So if I said walls, I'm going to just quickly guess the height here, guys. I'm going to say these are 3 metres higher, and therefore this would be 3 metres, and there would be 2.4 metres. So I'm going to say 3 metres, because I can see straight away that, there's, that, that this is what needed to happen. Right. Uh, what type of wall am I doing? Masonry veneer, right? And I would create a vignette, guys. So the reason I, I would do this is now I can see, oh, well, I didn't really want trim on the outside of my walls. I needed a step down for my concrete. I needed a whole heap of different things. I wouldn't go and trace the whole lot. And, guys, I recommend that you go and watch a, a video that we've got on YouTube, and it is called... 3D vignettes equals workflow efficiency for you design professionals. It is the video you need to watch. I'll put a link in the video below because I do think that that's an important video for everyone to understand. It's going to help you when you're new to design, but it's also going to help you when you're a professional and you've got a lot on your mind and you just need to get things done more quickly. Vignettes are the key to this. However, this is the key to getting your floor levels right. Now, if I actually just went Control-Z and undid that and brought back the plan, or I looked at the other plan, I can now see that I also have an 86 millimeter step down from here to here. So this would also come up 86. You would spend the time. Again, spend the time to start. Don't get gung-ho. I got a model. I got a model. I got a model because if it bugger it all up, you start right, you finish right. I was taught that when I, when I learned construction. And I let it follow through into when I'm doing design. Now, this isn't actually design. It's actually tracing. It's a lot easier than actually designing from scratch. I did design the, the project myself. Uh, and thinking about all these things as you go is a skill that will take a while to learn. Now, I did mention there was one thing that I did wrong. And you know what? We all bugger things up. I'm one of them. And what I should have done and what I kind of expected to be done by this student was to ensure that the plan was scaled before we started to trace over it. And it wasn't done. Number one sin is you must have scale first, right? And the way I would check that is I would just use my SketchUp lines and I would go about drawing from, and I'll be accurate here, from the centre of the line, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to type in this measurement on the plan, 28300 in millimetres. 
And then I'm going to zoom in over to here and go, well, hold on, there's a mistake there. Now, at this stage, there's two things I need to check. Is the drawing drawn correctly? So what I would do is I would go down here and I would do the same on the opposite axis, right? In this case, green. And I'm going to type in 9125. 9125, enter. And again, it's out incremental, which means that if I select this plan and then I actually go and use the tools to allow me to scale this correctly, I should find that the opposite axis comes in to direction. So what I did is I selected it, and guys, there's tutorials inside of this tool. I'm not doing a tutorial. 28300, I'm going to go to here. I'm going to type in 28300. Right, check it, move the plan to the end of my line. And now I know I have a scale. Number one thing I should have done was scale the plan before I do this because essentially what that means is everything that I, if I had to spend a whole heap of time reading all these measurements and typing them in, I probably wouldn't have had a problem with scale. However, I didn't and I traced over the drawing and therefore all the work that I did here was useless. Guys, get efficient with your time as quickly as you can because the more efficient you get with your time, the more you'll get done in a certain amount of time. And if you're looking to be employed by a builder or an architectural firm or anything like that, showing accuracy at the same time as efficiency will ensure you get the job and ensure you get paid well. All right, guys, I hope it helps. Uh, and I look forward to hearing any feedback or any questions you might have about getting involved in design, um, ask them below, guys. We'll do our best to, to, to help you out. If you like the video, push like. If you dislike the video, push dislike because we need to know if we can improve. And when we know we've done the wrong thing and you tell us why in the comments, we'll do our best to make sure our next video is better. All right, guys. Cheers.